The lines between FPV and cinema drones are being blurred all the time. FPV cinematic footage is here to stay and captures some unique shots. The Sicario X8, however, doesn't just blur the lines, it redefines them. Hey everyone, my name is Sean and welcome to Geeksvana. Coming up today, we're going to be bringing you all the details of the latest project on offer from Quad Standard Labs, conceived and perfected on set by Gabriel Coker and Andy Shen. This includes highlights from a sit down I had with Troy himself from QSL. Before we launch into it, Geeksvana is a channel focused on drones and tech. From the latest drone news, interviews and live streams, we put the geek in your tech nirvana. If that sounds like your kind of thing, subscribe and hit the notification bell to get your drone news first. The Quad Lab Sicario FPV Cine Lifter is a marvel of technology which has been carefully created and molded to form a viable platform for the video production industry. Capable of producing high-end cinematic footage via either a Zcam or Red Komodo camera setup, the Sicario also looks damn sexy. Developed in secret on set by Andy Shen and Gab707 to deliver a dynamic platform capable of smooth and steady shots, whether at low speed or thundering along at over 100 kilometers an hour. As you can see from these pictures, the Sicario has the option of the DJI FPV system to provide a high quality link to the pilot, giving you more chance of securing that multi-million dollar movie moment from a unique and audience satisfying angle. Quad Standard Labs offers the platform in a ready-to-fly format, tested and tuned. They even offer their own form of refresh to help with repairs and upgrades along the way. The QSL online drone builder shows base models starting from just shy of $4,000, with some setups taking you much closer to $8,000. This really is a serious piece of kit. Recently, I sat down to chat with Troy from Quad Standard Labs, and here are some of the highlights. How did the the sin lifter actually come about where, where did the idea come from um so fpv cine lifter the kind of coined the terminology actually goes to benoit finnick um who's finky fpv a lot of people know him that way uh he's the guy's done uh, he laid the groundwork especially in europe as far as uh i, I don't even want to like downgrade him or, or like you know uh <laughs> Uh, make it, uh, insult him by calling it marketing material but he really does like he has an eye for using FPV in the application of like how can we capture these perspectives or these things with these new perspectives right and 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 it's not that it you know he does you know marketing material stuff you know all the way up to high high level graded stuff on set so um, everything that he's doing uh, has really inspired and transformed just from his perspective a lot of our stuff. So um, when when he's he kind of to my understanding kind of st started that terminology, and now once we started seeing this crazy stability where we're like, hey, if you can tune your aircraft right, you can basically throw a GoPro on there and mm -hmm. it'll just it'll capture some awesome stuff. And then you know obviously stabilization comes into play with heroes and all that. So that quickly even changed to where tuning still is a huge thing when it comes to the feel of the aircraft. But even with the vibration, now we're a little bit less tolerant or a little more tolerant it seems because some people just say, "Hey, eh, if it's got a little vibe, I'll throw hyper smooth on." So at that point, that's where these guys with bigger cameras start going, no, 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 no. We see that if we can tune the right aircraft the right way, we really can get a pretty clean image to begin with. And then from there, sure, we can clean it up with traditional full format, real on production st style stabilization. And that's what can attract the bigger clients. Now, Absolutely. this is again where this whole thing gets matured together is, just because the hardware matures doesn't mean that it's instantly adopted. I, I've been, I myself have been preaching cinematic FPV for two years more. This is where things kind of coalesced last year where I started my own company because I was already working for some other companies and an FPV company prior where um, I leveraged my friendship and relationship with Andy and we built um, ready to fly squirts. We were for a while, the only company able to do that. Awesome. Uh, and again, it was because I saw this like becoming something people needed. So when I went out on my own and started my own thing, um, you know, Andy started still helping me and, and pushing people my way. He liked what I did. He appreciated how I built Brilliant. stuff yeah. and the way that we did business together. So um, he started letting me in. I started talking to other guys and other pilots and people. 
And um, I, I, I don't know how to, to shoot. Like I'm not a camera guy, so I don't know what people need. Um, the pilots do though. And so as these guys start maturing and a lot of them have embedded themselves into building their own stuff like Gab and Nurk. Yep. Um, these guys have also worked with, with Andy to basically try to perfect whatever specific thing they need. Excellent. So this is where Gab come in and, and Andy have been working together for or forever. I started building just anything that people were using professionally. And I was recommending the things that Gab and Andy were building because Gab was showing it worked and Andy was making them and built selling a bunch of them. So that's what started me building just basically anything that was a Shindra that could be used and starting to focus on the specifics of the hobbyists are hobbyists and we love hobbyists, but the business is where uh, we need to really focus is professionals because they're willing to pay a, 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 a quality dollar for a quality product and as long as it works and is supported and it does what they need i mean that's what they do all day long and again i think this is the maturity of the 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 fpv side and the guys that have the ability to shoot starting to understand the business and so that's where even though you still have these people that know how to shoot they know how to fly but then you have on the other side the creatives still that just still aren't there yet right and so this is where we were last year is you know, we could build some heavy stuff and that's where they started thinking about this stuff, but it didn't matter. Nobody wanted it. Like who was going to ask for it? And so that's where we had to start figuring out how to get these things on the sets and stuff. So building bigger ones and getting them to carry bigger lenses and stuff and bigger cameras, you know, Gab and Nurk and these guys started being able to show, like, look at what it can do. And yeah. you, know, you get one or two directors stuff. or people or creatives, you know, really embedded in, in the industry they'll start talking about it. Next thing you know, they're pulling up YouTube videos and they're like, Oh, okay. If we could do this with this, we could do that. You know, to, to me, it seems like you've, you've brought all of that together with the Sicario and you've, you've now got this platform, which not only looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's Andy, right? It looks so, stunning. So um, really quick, just to make sure that everybody understands uh, the Sicario platform is basically the evolution of the thick platform. So, Sicario, S-I-C-C -C, with the double C, was because Andy was calling it code, like to, to the to the people knew about it. He was calling it sick, S-I-C-C, -C, -C, because yes. it was the next iteration of thick, and it was just what he was calling it, um, just behind closed doors. So um, Andy and Gab again have been working on this for I, I I don't even want to put a number to it. I'd say probably close to a year or more. Um, they've been working on the thick as well, which is the uh, Cinelifter that we've been building and we've built quite a few of right now. In fact, I've got about five of them that we're building right now. Um, and that's what it was all kind of based on was that was the one that we were able to carry the BMP and basically any really full flat, full platform camera you could carry on it. So what happened was Gab started shooting on the 6K BMP, but then he realized this Z cam came out and him and Raphael and some other guys started experimenting with Z cam. And the Z cam became also, oh yeah, by the way, Red's coming out with the Komodo. And it just became this perfect, like, again, if the industry is going to box cams, yes, we need to look at something that's going to now optimize what Thick does. One of the things that as a camera drone guy, I'm very envious of when I look across the fence, uh, although the fence is lowering, we're all coming together a lot more these days, which is awesome. Um, but with, with exactly what you've just described with this project, I, I love the FPV world from the point of view that everyone comes together. There's, there's, yeah. there's always multiple people, multiple companies working on a project. And then you end up with something like the Sicario, um, which yeah. is, which is amazing. You just don't get that on our side. You couldn't of the do it any other way. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the beauty of it. Right. And I, the funny thing is I've seen, so I've seen this from the inside out and it's exactly how I do business and why I do business the way I do. Um, things have to work out. They have to align. I never force anything. Uh, me and Gab talked last year. We talked last year. I basically, I, I touched base when I started my company. I called everybody I knew and set up a phone call or emailed them and said, hey, I'd just love to talk to tell you what I'm going to do. And Gab was one of those guys. And I told him and I said, I don't know exactly which direction is going to pay the bills right away. Yep. But what I'm, one thing I want to do is I want to bring a product into production that is going to be a tool that is out the, again, I don't know what it is. And I was like, I would, this was when uh, Ichabod Jr. was really big. It had just gotten mm -hmm. kind of started. 
And I was like, I'd love to do Ichabod Jr. as like my, my quad standard labs, like go to five inch. And the problem was he had just signed a deal with TBS to do the exact same thing. So he's right. like, Troy, I can't do it. I can't work with you on that. So he said, but I promise you we'll find something like something's going to work out. And again, a couple of guys, I talked to uh, plenty of people and, you know, everybody pretty much, we all came to the same thing. Hey, this is what you're going to do. Cool. Let me know. We'll figure it out. And so again, it, it just happened to be, you know, eight months later or so that, you know, they had this thing and he calls me up and goes, Troy, I love what you're doing. Um, looks like you're doing really well. Like, you know, what can we do to work together? And that that's, yes. Um, I couldn't do it any other way. Cause I'm not a shooter. I don't have, it's, a, it's you know, I, have a, yeah. I have a GH 85 right here. It's not a very good camera for a camera drone. Um, that's about it. So I don't know anything about shooting. So it's <laughs> like, I couldn't, I couldn't even design the right thing. I, I'm not a designer. So that's where Andy comes in. So, you know, and, and then Andy, I mean, I think Andy is probably, the least res understood or people just don't even know have an appreciation for what Andy represents or just the knowledge behind everything. And the fact that he basically shares it and 99% yeah. of yeah. people don't even read it or know it exists that like mm -hmm. his blog even exists. And like that blog will teach you so much about so many different things, not even the drone that he's talking about. If you just watch the processes he goes through. So I, <laughs> That guy, I think, is so underappreciated. It, it is available from from the point of view that 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 you're able to take it back in and repair it. Um, that you're also able to arrange it to be tuned to be exactly how 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 the yep. client wants, etc. Um, so yeah. it, it 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 has it feels to me like the first time I'm seeing something of this nature that's so professionally put together and, and packaged um, yeah. that, that it, it so, can fit seamlessly in, into someone's commercial activities. It's something they can add. To their business yeah. which is and at the heart cool. that's basically the qsl part of it right so quad center labs again like when i started the brand of the company um the idea was uh, fanatical support for customers thank you to troy for taking the time to speak with geeks varna it is clear that with the sicario fpv cine lifter we're looking at a product born of passion skill and dedication this really does show how the fpv drone industry is leaping forward Hit the links in the description below to find out more about the product on offer, as well as the socials for everyone involved. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Please remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> All right, you're still here. Uh, no one see. <laughs>